Two years ago, Pegacle started the myth-busting series. A year later, Hal Castle and Tyler continued it for him. And now today, with permission from Hal Castle, I'll be continuing the series once again. So let's jump straight into it. Since we're starting a new series, instead of the normal one block, I'm going to be placing 10 blocks of diamond for every single subscriber I gain from this video. So if you want to definitely ruin my island, subscribe. If you craft all four Necron swords on one sword, you'll get the achievement. Well, this should be pretty easy considering I have a suspicious Scylla right now. So all I really need to do is head over to the AH and buy the, the materials. Okay, so now I have the resources to do it. So I'm gonna start off with probably the one I'm not never gonna use, which is I'll craft into an Astrea. So going from Scylla to Astrea, then we'll have a Hyperion. And finally, we're gonna turn it into Valkyrie. So since I started off at a Scylla, this should give me an achievement if it's real. And it looked like I got absolutely no achievement in chat. So I think I just wasted a bunch of money. Nice. Next myth. The speed stat shown on Shadow Fury doesn't work in dungeons. Okay, so first thing I have to do is buy a Shadow Fury. So first of all, I'm going to test it out not in dungeons. So if I go over here, we can see that my speed is 370. But if I hold out the Shadow Fury and then we look at it again, it's 400. So it looks like it does work outside of dungeons. But let me hop in a dungeon and see how it changes. Okay, so now I'm in a dungeon and in the dungeon, I have... 209 speed without holding anything in my hand but if i hold a shadow fury does this speed change and it looks like it does and this looks like by around double i assume that it is getting affected by the bonus of my cata level the speed does work with the shadow fury so myth busted myth what happens if you have negative crit damage and wither shield so if you don't know, the Wither Shield is one of the abilities that you can get from the scrolls that you can put on your Valkyrie, Hyperion, or just any of the Necron's blades. So if you read here in the Wither Impact description, it says teleport 10 blocks ahead of you, then implode dealing whatever damage to nearby enemies. Also applies the Wither Shield scroll ability. So if you go over here, the ability for the Wither Shield is reduces damage taken by 10% for 5 seconds. Also grants an absorption shield that gives 150% of your crit damage as health. After 5 seconds, 50% of the shield is converted into healing. So, this guy's asking, what happens if we take that crit damage and make it negative? Will it affect the absorption shield? Let's see. First thing we gotta do is, cause I actually use my Hyperion mainly for healing, it has Suspicious. And if you don't know what Suspicious does, you can read it here, and it gives you uh, some extra crit damage, as you can read over there at the top. So, of course, we're gonna have to change this reforge to something that doesn't give crit damage. So, I got it onto Fast, and Fast doesn't give any crit damage, so that's gonna be good for us, and there is no reforge that decreases crit damage. So this is probably going to be fun for what we're trying to do. Next, we have to go into our booster cookie and our potion effects and disable critical and spirit as they both grant crit damage. Now we're going to take all of our armor here and we're going to turn all of it into heavy as heavy decreases crit chance. So as you can see here, you can see that it decreases crit damage. So we're going to get this on all this armor so we can get a little less. Okay, so I just realized I have critical 6 on my Valkyrie or Hyperion, same thing. So uh, I need to remove it, but I can't. So my only option is to waste a bunch of money and buy myself an one for all book and apply that to my Valkyrie to remove it. Now, finally, to end this off and actually achieve negative crit damage, I'm gonna have to buy this eccentric painting bundle, which should do the trick. So I'm really gonna be wasting over 100 mil on this stupid video. Now, if I talk to Maxwell, then go to here, I can dump all of these into here. 
and I can learn the power and then now I have the bizarre power which is going to reduce my crit damage by 76. If I go to my stats I now have negative 32% crit damage. So now I'm in the private hub and I'm just gonna teleport with my aspect of the void so I can take some fall damage. Okay so now we had some decent damage. If I do this it's gonna give me no absorption hearts and it's legitimately not going to heal me at all so it looks like wither impact does not heal me at all when i have negative crit damage myth you can use a god pot in a dungeon well this one is quite simple so first let's just go and buy ourselves a god potion i have a lot of bits and now i'll head into a dungeon and it actually says, it just says nothing. I'm right clicking it. So uh, yeah, you just can't use a god pot in dungeons. Can you choose bosses with a group of people using Enderbow's ability? Necron, ability works in F7, you have to try that. Void Glooms, etc. Okay, so this one might be a little bit confusing at first, but let me explain it. Basically, there's a bow known as the Enderbow, and the ability is Ender Warp. When you left click, it shoots an ender pearl. Upon landing, you deal damage to all monsters in an 8 block radius for 10% of their health. So, the first thing I'm kind of curious to know is when I do this teleport thing, which you can see right there, will I be able to teleport in floor 7 boss room? Because if you don't know, or I guess most of you know, that you can't use any type of teleportation inside the floor 7 boss room. So, maybe they overlook this. I don't know. That's what we're going to test. Okay, so I've started a dungeon and we're just going to go and do a quick solo clear and then check if we are actually able to use it in floor 7. Let's go through and see if it works. I'm pretty sure it won't. Yeah, so when I try to use it, a mystical force in this room prevents you from using that ability. So this is definitely not going to work. So the next part of the myth was asking if you could use the ability where it damages the actual mobs because it says here it does 10% of their health. If you could use that to like grind bosses or something. But I am almost certain that it would be very ineffective. Let me show you why. So basically if I have the ender bow you can see that zombie has 100 HP. So when I teleport to it it's going to take 10 damage. But let's then wait till we regenerate it again and let's see how much damage it does on the second try. And if I use the ability on it, it's going to take 9 damage instead of 10. So that means it's going to be taking 10% of the HP it has, not its max HP. And that's going to make it deal very little damage in the long run. To make this a little easier to understand, let's use a graph. So on my screen right now, you'll be seeing a graph. On the y-axis or the vertical axis is the health of the mob. We're going to be using 100 for this example. Then on the horizontal axis or the x-axis, we're going to be having how many ender bow hits you will need or ender bow hits as a number. So you can see that the total HP of the mob is going to take a while to decrease to zero. And technically it can never get to zero because 10% of something is always going to be a number, but it will get really, really close. This is going to be the same no matter what mob we're talking about. So it's not going to be feasible in any way. You get double mining XP from Mithril in the Crystal Hollows than the Dwarven Mine, despite the game telling you it's the same. So basically this one is pretty simple. Okay, so first we can see that the last three digits of my overflow mining XP is 531.9. So when we break this block, that's going to be changing to 608.2, which is equal to 76.3 XP. So it didn't take too long to find, but I actually found one of these mithril spots in the crystal hollow. So now all I'm going to do is check my mining XP before. So that is ending at 684.5. Then let's grab this and let's just break this. And now let's see the total, which is 837.2. That is equal to 152.3 additional XP, which is basically, as the guy said, double the amount you got in the Dwarven Mines. So 
you could probably make a lot of extra XP if you just farm all these locations. And I think this is a method that a lot of people do use to get really fast mining XP. So this myth is confirmed. Wither Cloak makes you not take fall damage and consumes no mana. Okay, so this one's quite simple. Basically, he's saying that when you use a Wither Cloak and you fall down, it doesn't use mana. So if you don't know, the way the Wither Cloak works is quite simple. The ability is Creeper Veil and when you right click it, it activates. I think everyone know th knows this. And basically, it spawns a Veil of Creeper around you that grants you immunity from damage cost 20% of your maximum mana each time you block a hit, unable to attack while the shield is active. Okay, so let's test it out. We're gonna first do it without it to find a consistent area. So if I drop down from here to this snowy area, I take around four hearts of damage. Now we're gonna use the Wither Cloak and we have 1,701 mana. So if I drop down here, I should take no damage and I should keep my mana if this is correct. So it looks like the ability just didn't activate. I still took the damage even though I had my creeper veil up. So I guess it just doesn't work on fall damage. So I guess we could say myth busted. If you go to the deep caverns, the old skyblock lobbies will be there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and head over to the deep caverns and uh, see what this means. So I'm assuming he means the stuff back there are gonna be the old things instead of the new ones. So from the looks of it, it doesn't look like I can even travel far enough to see because it says I cannot travel that far from the island. But what I can see is that this island is actually the old one. So if you don't know, the farming islands look nothing like that. If I go and I warp myself to the farming islands, you can see that the farming islands are completely revamped. They look completely different right now. So I guess we could say myth confirmed. The tarantula helmet bonus crit damage does not show in your stats. This one is quite simple. If you look at the ability of the tarantula helmet called radioactive, it says gain one crit damage per 10 strength. So what I'm guessing is that this guy says that it doesn't appear on your stats when you look at them. So if we take a look at our stats, we can see that our crit damage right now is 36%. And then if we also go and take a look at the normal stats on the tarantula helmet, it says that we're gonna get 37% crit damage. That means when we put this on, we should get 73. However, the ability also exists, so we should get a little bit more crit damage because of that ability. Now, let's hover over th this, and it looks like we didn't get something over 73, meaning that the actual bonus did not apply because we would have at least slightly more than 73, but obviously it didn't work. However, even though it doesn't show up in the stats, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. So I'm gonna test it. I have right here the tarantula helmet, and then I have another great spook helmet, both reforged with ancient. They should give the exact same stats, assuming that it doesn't actually have the bonus but it just doesn't appear so if i put this on i will be getting 73 crit damage and if i punch this zombie i'm going to be doing 26 damage if i go and i swap this and put tarantula helmet on this time then i should also be getting 73 crit damage just like it says but now if i hit this i'm going to be doing 34 damage instead so this means that it technically the ability it does work but it just doesn't show up in stats for whatever reason but because the myth only said it doesn't show up in stats i guess we can say that this myth is confirmed myth you can get negative speed well yes but actually no well what do i mean by that you can't actually get the stat of speed to be negative and there's a reason for that if you've been on Skyblock for a bit at the recent times, you might have noticed that at one point, you kept getting a message talking about the Armadillo pet being disabled. And the reason it was disabled is because there was a glitch. Where if you have negative speed with the Armadillo pet, then you just go insanely fast. And that kind of broke a lot of stuff and people were making a ton of money. So they obviously patched that. And I don't know if they fixed the negative speed glitch, but from what I know, they just fixed the way to get negative speed. So uh, maybe they don't want 
there to be any way to get negative speed just in case that happens. However, I will show you how to get the lowest speed and there's actually a way to get the same effect as negative speed. Getting the lowest possible speed in the game is actually quite easy. You only need two items. You need a warden's helmet and rancher boots. So first you set the rancher boots to have a speed cap of five. I don't know why you can set it this low, but you can. So you put those on and then you put on your warden helmet and warden helmet's ability is have your speed. So basically you are now going at 2.5 speed, but you really can't get lower than this. The reason you technically can't get any lower is because the rancher boots just cap your speed. So whenever you use anything like let's say some super heavy armor to actually reduce your speed, cause it should reduce it by 11, it's not actually going to reduce my speed because my speed is actually a lot higher. It's just that it's capped. So this only affects my actual base speed, not my capped speed. So unless I can naturally get it to lower than 2.5, then it's never going to work. But there is still a way to get the same effect as negative speed. Due to the way the game is coded, the slowness potion doesn't actually work correctly. So it says that it's supposed to decrease your speed by 35%, but it doesn't actually do that and it just uses the vanilla way to actually decrease your speed. So if you look at my speed right now, you'll be able to see that I'm at 221. But if I drink this potion, I should only be 35% less, right? And I did get a little bit of a decrease, but look when I try to move. If you look in the top left, I'm pressing all the keys on my keyboard and I can't move. For some weird reason, the slowness potion doesn't work and literally just makes you paralyzed. You can't move. And I can't even override it with like just a bunch of speed. Even if I put like a young set, it doesn't override it. I still am immobile. I can only jump and move while I'm in the air. If you have a friend, I guess, who you have access to their account and um, you want to troll them, you could technically go and buy a potion and, and drink it and then would have no idea why they can't move which might be kind of funny but i guess we could say myth confirmed and busted at the same time that's going to be it for this episode of myth busting if you want me to bust any more myths feel free to leave some in the comments below and i'll see you later take care and peace